Candela Obscura, Episode 2 When I'm not there, they get shot. My name, it's not important. But, my name is Sir Rufus Cromwell. I got mixed up in a thing, and I'm afraid of where it's going. But with all sincerity, when I'm not there, they get shot. Rufus! Rufus! He's out cold! Dr. Charlotte Winter stood flabbergasted, staring at the lump called Sir Rufus Cromwell. She lifted his arm and dropped it like a brick. I got pretty beat up the first day, so I had to take the next day off to recover. I thought they would have waited, but they don't know how dangerous things really are. Not to mention all the mouth and nose sores from those nasty foul wilt imps. Anyway, I stayed back with Shop and Cat, but this is what I heard has happened so far. As Dr. Charlotte Winters, Jacqueline O'Lantern, and Professor Tian Das and Leo the Card awoke the next day, they found Cap and Shop setting up three tables. They assisted where they could. Me, Rufus? I was passed out in the corner sleeping off my day's toils and a few drinks. Shortly after the tables were set up, several tattered groups showed up with gathered food, clothing, blankets, and other necessities. Westrek was not the kind of place that had necessities just lying around. They had to make good with what they had. Usually that meant if you had something, you would be knifed that night. But Cap and Shop provided an alternative. What is this? Charlotte inquired. After they placed the goods on the tables, to their surprise, Shop pulled out three bags with silver coins in them. He gave two silver pieces to each group and took another six silver out and put them in his pocket. After the group left, he took the bags of silver over to Leo, Tion, and the unconscious me. He gave a bag to each of us. It was only then that we realized these were our bags of silver and Shop had pickpocketed us. Leo and Tion were about to voice their dissatisfaction, but then people off the streets began to come in. These people were troubled, injured, maimed, beyond poor, and without hope. Shop instructed them to take only what they needed, and they did so, not saying anything to anyone. They just took, and then they left. Charlotte, seeing people in dire need, stepped forward. I am a doctor. Does anyone need? She did not have a chance to finish her sentence. The people fled when Charlotte stepped forward to offer her medical assistance. One look at her and they all ran. She has that government look. A few minutes later, Shop signaled for a couple urchin kids off the street to come over. He asked them to run over to the Candela house and fetch a light keeper. He looked over at the group and asked for a couple silver pieces for payment. Leo happily obliged, only to watch Shop take the two silver pieces and put them in his own pocket. The street kids returned about ten minutes later. Dr. Charlotte, Jacqueline, Professor Doss, and his nephew Leo were introduced to a very charming Candela Obscura lightkeeper named Joseph Spires. Joseph was a very high in spirits, overdressed in a fancy sweater, and a quite distracted person, easily led off topic. Joseph and Professor Das recognized each other. Joseph had been an uninspiring student of Professor Tian Das. But apparently, 
his lack of attendance was due to his involvement with Candela Obscura. He had been the unfortunate victim of a phenomenon attack that killed both of his parents. Joseph seemed like he came out okay though. Walking through Westrec was saddening. Every alley and corner had some qu something questionable going on. There was also the fact that it felt as though they were being watched. Always. Joseph led the group to a safe house where they could find answers and take shelter when needed. They were also introduced to a stoic hardened man wearing a black duster jacket named Andrew. He wore the jacket like a cloak over his arms. One time he turned and the investigators could see Andrew's left arm. He had been in a very bad accident that tore off half his arm and blackened the left side of his body. He did not say much, mostly he signed. It was easier. His throat was badly damaged. The safe house had many needed items for doing an investigation. Healing powders and antibiotics, gun powders and explosives, chemicals for mixing strange and dangerous ideas. Leo, Tion and Charlotte took full advantage of some of these items. Joseph did brag about a wonderful archaeological dig he was participating in, in the area called Vulture's Paradise. Vulture's Paradise was the most heavily landmined area in Westrecht. It was where, during the war, the enemy had made their landing and tried to fortify the area so that they would have a port of access. Of course, people often go there to collect items to sell, but often meet their doom, hence Vulture's Paradise. We were told the Owlers, with their funny hats, were the only ones that go there safely. We wanted to get more information. We convinced Joseph, who eagerly agreed, to show us the archaeological site. The next morning we packed up supplies and headed for Vulture's Paradise. Joseph took us through the cityscape. We thought the other parts of Westrek were rough, but this place made them look like briar green. Craters were everywhere from all the landmines that had exploded. There were only fragments of bones about. The rest had been collected by scavengers and sold at market. Most of the living were virtually unseen except you might see a foot sticking out from an old fallen wall that was a makeshift shelter or you might see a pile of empty food cans along a gully. We went uphill for about a couple hundred feet only to peek at the very sharp decline heading down into Vulture's Paradise. The terrain was loose and dangerous. Gravel slipped easily under their feet. The sight below was savage. Beyond all the tragedy that had soaked this land, there was an even more dire and caustic smog of phenomena that saturated this rancid soil. Joseph stressed that, everyone walk where I walk, don't stray, don't get distracted. They all nodded in acknowledgement, except Leo. He thought he saw a squirrel. They made their way downward. The coastal waters were visible and the ocean was a deep green. The rock below their feet constantly gave way and made the journey quite treacherous. They approached a large boulder area and Joseph said, We're getting close. This is a safe spot. Please wait here and I shall run ahead and warn them that I have guests with me. It should only be a couple minutes. Joseph with caution moved around the boulder and made his way away from them and down the hill. The party had some time to discuss their plans, but time kept moving forward. After an hour or so, they began to notice that Joseph had not returned. 
They waited a little more, but evening was quickly approaching. Professor Doss took a brief look around the boulder and could see Joseph's path. Come on, we better get out of here. That crook, Jacqueline stated. Did he set us up? asked Charlotte. What do you think, Charlotte? growled Jacqueline. Leo stayed close to Tion. Tion looked as though he were figuring out something. I, uh, he paused. I, uh, think I can see the pattern. I think I've got this figured out. I can tell by Joseph's footsteps where the mines will be. He did head back up, in a hurry, I might add. His strides are getting longer. That crook! Jacqueline looked defiant. We don't know what happened, Leo ventured. No, we know. As the sun began to set, the investigators made their way out of Vulture's Paradise. Professor Doss looked back. Just in time. Any darker, and I would not have been able to see a thing. They climbed up and out of the valley into a heavily demoralized area. With night settling in, human life, if it could be called that, had begun to move. The humans slothed to and fro and crawled out from their hiding spots. Looking only at the ground, they would pick up something, then toss it down, always wading forward, always dragging their feet, never looking up, never making eye contact. There was an uneasy feeling in the air, like something could happen at any moment. Leo turned to Charlotte. So, where do we go? This does not feel safe. Back to Andrel. That was supposed to be our safe house, Charlotte said. How can we? Joseph was bad. How do we know if Andrel can be trusted, stated Jacqueline. I uh, think we should go back to shop and cap, Tion said plainly. They seem trustworthy. His last words trailed off, remembering that shop had stolen more than just a few silver pieces. At least Rufus is there. Just then, they heard one gunshot. Moments later, they heard another gunshot. Leo turned to speak with his uncle and Jacqueline. They were both on the ground. They had been shot. The gunmen fled the scene. Night had set. They were alone. And like I said, when I'm not there, they get shot, Rufus stated. Next episode, there are monsters other than monsters.